Good morning. A ball with mass 1.4 kilograms is thrown downward from the top of a building, okay, with a height of 14 meters, 14 meters, and initial speed of v naught, okay, and an angle of theta, theta, with respect to the horizontal, as shown in the figure. The x component of the initial velocity, vx naught, mm, that's okay, is 19.2 meters per second, and the ball hits the ground at a distance 21 meters from the building, as shown in the figure. How long is the ball in the air? Okay, okay, okay. So first thing we do is this screams kinematic equations. So we're going to start with writing up our kinematic equations. I start with A equals constant. I just write that as A equals A. V equals AT plus V naught. And X equals 1 half AT squared plus V naught T plus X naught. I like to write them out this way because that way it's obviously just one is the integration of the next is the integration of the next one. So what we're going to do here is we're trying to find how long the ball is in the air. And we know the x initial speed and we know the um, x acceleration because there's all the acceleration here is due to gravity. So in the x direction, there's nothing, which means I'm going to write, I'm going to try to use this one right here. Whoop, over here. So x final will equal d, which will be 21 meters. x initial, let's call that 0. a in the x direction, also going to call that 0. And I'm going to write it as v initial x. I know they do x. I prefer it to be go from big to small. So you're like, well, we have the v initial, and you get the idea. You'll, you'll manage confidence 19.2 meters per second. Okay? Boom, 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 boom. Okay, is that all we need? And then we need t equals question mark. How long is the ball? Oh, okay, yeah, we're good here. Okay, so plugging these in, we have 21 equals, that goes to zero. V naught x is 19.2. 19.2 times t plus another zero um, for x naught. And this is our equation, okay? Rearranging it, we have t in seconds is 21 divided by 19.2, which will be slightly bigger than one. So 21 divided by 19.2, 21 divided by 19.2, we get 1.094, 1.094, okay? 1.094. Seconds. And our answer is bum bum bum. I'll say B. One point eh, that's there we go. One point zero nine seconds. Okay, sounds good. Moving on, part two. What is the initial velocity in the y direction, the y component of the ball's initial velocity? Hmm. Okay, so we have height of y equals 14 meters. So I'm going to do the same equation as before, except now we have an extra piece of data. We have the time. The idea is that it's going to hit in the x direction the same time that it hits in the y direction. So I'm going to say y final. I should change colors. No. Nope. Um, yes. I'll change colors. Whoop, whoop. Green. Ooh, I do like green. Y final will equal 0 because it hits the ground. Y initial will be, what is it, 14? 14 meters, 14 meters, 14 meters. That's like what, 50 feet, 45 feet? Acceleration, I'm going to say negative 9.8. I could say 9.81, but I'm going to assume that 9.8 is close enough. T, I'm going to use 1.09, because even though we have it 1.94, we said before 1.09, I'll go with that. Hopefully, I don't have to be that accurate. And see why initial, why, oh, V naught y equals question mark because that's what we're trying to find so this looks like it's probably going to give us a quadratic maybe probably a quadratic so rewriting this change colors to show my change in thought process so we have negative 4.9 t squared plus v naught t so this will be v naught y times 1.09 i know this should actually be 1.09 squared there we go. 
plus y initial, which we know is 14. And this will equal 0, because that's our final, final destination, if you will. Uh, make sure that not doesn't have any negatives. So v not y, we don't know. OK, seems reasonable. Multiply everything by negative. No, we don't have to. So this, is, this should be easy. So we'll say v not y. This isn't a quadratic at all. Excellent. So I have move everything. Hmm. I'm gonna move everything over to the right side. So I have 4.9 times 1.09 squared minus 14 divided by 1.09. So boom, boom, boom. Is that right? Seems right. I'm gonna go with that. So. We have 4.9 times 1.09 squared. I think it was minus 14, minus 14 quantity. And then divide by, I think there's another 1.09 involved. So I'll see what goes on here. So we have 4.9, 1.09 squared, negative 14, minus 14. Yep, let's go for that. And we get negative 7.5. Okay, let's see if that works. Equals negative 7.05, and this will be meters per second. Whoop, whoop. Is that a possible answer? Ah, 7.5. Give it that zero. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And then I'm going to say that if I've been more careful with my carrying of the numbers, the significant figures, a bit more kosher, it would have gotten the right answer. So I'm going to say negative 7.4 meters per second is the correct answer. And um, it makes sense that it's negative. So that's kind of an idiot check there, or dummy check, or common sense check to make sure that it's negative. Because it's, it's moving downward. Reasonable. Throwing downward theta here. We're assuming theta is a positive value. Okay. Focus, 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 focus. If the ball is thrown at the same angle, check, but with a greater speed, the ball would be in the air a shorter amount of time. And the reason that is, is we would look at this equation right here, and so this acceleration is negative, but this v naught is also negative, and if it got bigger, then it'd become more negative, and it would reach the ground sooner. So it basically, you're throwing a ball at the ground. If you throw a ball harder at the ground, it'll get there quicker, i.e. shorter time. If the ball is thrown with the same speed but horizontally, a shallower angle, angle of fuel, it would hit the ground with, uh, let's see, faster speed. You want to throw downward the same speed or a slower speed. Okay, I'm going to say it would hit with a faster speed. And the reason it is, is because when you when you throw it horizontally, it's going to have a smaller y component in its velocity. That means it's going to take longer for the ball to hit the ground. And the longer the ball is in the air, the more time it has to um, um, acceler uh, accelerate downwards. And so that accelerating downwards is going to add um, speed to the ball in the y direction. You can see that through this this equation right here. You have a bigger t, constant acceleration, then you're going to get a um, t goes up, therefore speed in the uh, v, uh, y direction will go up. The speed in the x direction will be constant. So this would actually create a so it's still the same initial speed, that total speed going downwards then would be greater. So that's how I would approach this problem. Hope it helped. See you next time.